Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening wherever you are in this part of the world. This is Brother Velden Lim and I would like to welcome you to another session, another another online feast called Feast at Home. Maraming maraming salamat po for coming today, for joining us today in this feast. Ang tanong ko sa inyo ngayon, kamusta kayo? Nako, this is the first Sunday of Lent already. And bago tayo magumpisa, before we jump into our talk, we are actually, well, I would like to welcome you to a brand new series entitled OG Tales. OG as in original. Ayan, di ba? Yung iba, ano yung OG? Ayan, di ba? Nagkakabukingan na ng edad. Kung Gen Z ka, katulad ko, Nax, di ba? Gen Z. OG, alam natin yan. And before I jump into the talk, since this is the first Sunday of Lent, let me ask you this question first. What are you giving up this Lent? Ayan. Ano ang isa sacrifice mo? Yung iba siguro sa inyo, merong pagkain nagbibitawan. Yung iba siguro, bibitawan yung Facebook. Pero malamang hindi siguro kasi nanonood ka ngayon. Or maybe you're watching via YouTube. Hindi ko alam. What are you giving up this Lent? I'd like to see your answers in the comment, in the comment section. And as for me, ako, ang aking bibitawan this Lent is, ano lang, kailangan ko ibalik yung aking, ang, 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 ang aking, ano, ang aking, ang aking health I need to restore my health but aside from restoring my health I'm actually giving up um, um, refined carbohydrates like rice pasta ano ba ba um, bread and then I'm giving up sugar for the entire Lent no cheat days no cheat meal so ayun and that's what I did last year I'm still do I'd like to do it again and alam nyo, ito nakakatuwa kasi when you are giving up something for the Lord, you are actually more attuned to His presence. When you are fasting, mas naririnig mo yung boses niya, mas nagiging sensitive ka sa ginagawa niya sa buhay mo. How about you? What are you giving up this Lent? Nakakatuwa, no? Because as we as we are heading, actually, kakastart lang ng Lenten season natin. So, 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and from something sacrificing but remember this pray uh, when you fast you also give alms you also pray and ayun dapat yung fasting natin mag result into something better so that we can get closer to the lord take this time the season of lent to reflect to slow down and really be aware of god's presence in our lives amen so thank you for your answers napakaganda ng mga sagot natin at isa lang ang prayer ko sana talagang matupad natin yung 40 days of fasting na yan kung ano man ang gusto ninyo i-give up it at i-abstain from amen so ayan again I'd like to welcome you to our brand new series entitled OG Tales OG as in original and you see I have powerful messages for you today. And the first message that I'd like to share to you is this. God will meet you where you are. Are you hurting right now? Because someone has betrayed you and you're list listening to me right now with a broken heart. Let me tell you this. God will meet you where you are. Maybe you are feeling down. Your business is not earning very well. Okay, I'm down your finances. Mo. It's not picking up. Your savings is being depleted. Worry not because God will meet you where you are. May nakatampuhan ka ba? May kaalitan, hindi ka speaking terms sa pamilya mo o kaya siguro sa ibang kaibigan mo. Let me tell you this. If you have so much emotional baggage right now, God will also meet you where you are. Or maybe you are, your body is sick and you need healing. God will meet you where you are. Perhaps you have fallen as well. You have sinned again and again. Tapos gusto mo nang tumayo. And you feel frustrated with yourself kasi feeling mo pa ulit-ulit na kasalanan mo. Let me tell you this, God will still meet you where you are. My dear brothers and sisters, as we start of our feast today, let me remind you of this. Wherever you are right now in your life, whatever storm you are facing, whatever burdens you are carrying, believe that God is not sitting on His throne in heaven. Instead, God is waiting for you it's he's not waiting for you to come up to him. Instead, God is rushing towards you. And he is there to meet you where you are, in your place of need. God will meet you where you are. And you see, brothers and sisters, this is the message of the parables, which is what our new series is all about. And 
we are talking about our new series OG Tales Stories of Truth and Ab Abundance we are going to discuss many parables that Jesus discussed and talk one today I'll be discussing the parable of the sower the story of the sower but before we jump right into it can I invite you into prayer let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen lift your hands and pray this with me together today I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. That's one of God's words. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Our word for today comes from Matthew chapter 13. Let me begin with Matthew 13, 1 and 2. Read this with me. Later, that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. Then he sat there and taught as the people stood on the shore. I'd like, to imagine, I'd like you to imagine this picture of Jesus being on the boat. And I want you to know this, and I want you to understand this. Nung panahon ni Jesus, wala pang mic, wala pang mga loudspeaker. So speaking from a boat on a lake facing a hillside is very common. Bakit sila pumupunta sa boat at nasa lake? Kasi pagka nasa boat ka, tapos nagsasalita ka, mas maganda yung acoustics, yung bato, nung, nung sound. Kaya kung nandun ka, mas maririnig ka na mas maraming tao. It provided great acoustics. So this is a common practice during Jesus' during Jesus' time. However, in saying this, Matthew was also establishing here that at this point in the story, maybe one reason why Jesus is preaching in the boats is because Jesus could no longer preach in the synagogues. Doon sa kanilang mga quote-unquote simbahan noong mga panahon na yon, Their places of worship. Bakit? Because during this time, ito na, na naalala nyo noong mga nakaraang talk, nag-iinit na yung mga Pharisees, yung mga religious leaders against Jesus. During this time, those religious leaders want Jesus dead. Gusto na siyang ipapatay. Gusto na siyang hunting him. So, hindi na siya welcome. Nung umpisa, nagpipreach pa siya sa mga sinagogs. Pero ngayon, ano na, para-paraan si Jesus. And, you see, that's the wonderful thing about Jesus. I always, uh, I heard this once, you cannot take the preacher out of the synagogue, but you cannot take the synagogue out of the preacher. In the same way, this pandemic has, has, has taken us feasters out of the feast in Taguig City University Auditorium. But it has not taken out the feast in us because we have the feast in us. We have Jesus in us. And therefore, we came. We, we, we are actually um, inspiring other people through online and through our daily lives. And you see, that's what happened to Jesus. So, dahil bawal siya sa sinagog, siya na mismo ang nagpupunta sa mga tao. So, he preaches by the lakeside, by the roadside, and by the hillside to people who, just like him, were not welcome in the church. Lepers, the poor, the sinners. And this drives a point, our one big message even more, wherein we say yes, that yes, indeed, God will meet you where you are. My dear brothers and sisters, God is not waiting for you to go to church. Nandyan ang Diyos sa bahay mo ngayon. Nandyan ang Diyos nasa office mo. He is there with you when you are watching TV and Netflix. Nandyan ang Diyos habang nag exercise ka. Nandyan ang Diyos while you are making that sales call. Jesus is also there when you fall. He is there even when you are doing stupid things. Kinakalabit ka ng Diyos para magising ka sa katotohanan. He is there even when you think He's not there. Because God will meet you where you are. Amen. 
I pray that the Lord will inspire you today. I pray that the Lord will speak to you powerfully today. And I pray that the Word of God will not only meet you, but also transform you today. Amen. Can I invite you into prayer before we go into our feast? Close your eyes, bow down your heads. Pray this with me in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, thank you for leading me to watch this video right now. I know this is not an accident. May your message today meet my need. I need you, Lord. Thank you for always meeting me where I am, even if sometimes I am running away from you. Speak to me today. Change me today. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's honor God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning to everyone, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this world watching right now. By the way, our one big message for you today is this. God will meet you where you are. Pero alam nyo, I want you to know this. The feast's goal is to share God's love, especially to those who may feel far away from the Lord. And by God's grace, we are still able to do this, even this pandemic. Bakit? Kasi kahit na wala tayo sa physical venue natin, we are able to do this because of our online ministry. Ito pong nakikita ninyong setup. It's because we have found ways so that we can reach more people for the Lord. And hindi natin ito magagawa sa dal- kung hindi dahil sa dalawang bagay. Every single week, many hundreds of people, thousands of people are being blessed by this video. Why? Because of two things. First and foremost, we are able to do this even despite this pandemic because of your generosity. That's, that's why, first and foremost, I'd like to thank each and every one of you who has uh, seriously and faithfully given and supported our ministry. Maraming maraming salamat po for your generosity. And if you are new to the feast, you can give to the feast. You can give to our ministry so we can continue what we are doing through different ways. You can give via credit card or via PayPal. You can also deposit in our bank accounts, East West Bank or BDO or GCash even para sa mas mga sa mas mga ano dyan, mas nakakabata, di ba? It's very convenient and you can send in your donations, you can send in your support for our online ministry. The details are flashed on the screen, I believe so. So please continue what you are doing. Maraming maraming salamat po. And number two, we are able to let God meet the people in their homes, in their wherever they are through our online ministry. Bakit? Because of you who have shared and tagged your friends. Alam nyo, napakalaking bagay na every single week, you are sharing this video in your timelines. You are tagging your friends to watch this. Because who knows, they might need this video right now. At pag nag-pop up yan sa news feed nila, and they will be blessed, and hopefully, they will be transformed, and God will meet them where they are. Kasi alam nyo, ito paniniwala ko ha, bakit mahalaga na sinishare natin? Bakit mahalaga na tinatag din natin yung feeling natin na nangangailangan nito? Kasi, alam nyo, every single week, ang tagal bago i-prepare itong talk na ito. Pero kahit na anong ganda ng message natin sa feast, kung hindi ninyo isi-share, baka masayang lang. And who knows, yung pag-share nyo na yan, that, that sharing can actually change the life of your friend in, in Facebook or in YouTube. I don't know. Because this video might be the answer to someone else's need. So what are you waiting for? If you haven't shared this video right now, if you haven't tagged your friends right now, please do so right now. Because I believe the Lord will change the life of the people that just might see this video right now through your sharing. Be a God, be an instrument of the Lord in meeting people where they are. Go! If you haven't done it yet, meron kayong makikita na sa bottom part, na sa right side, merong share button. Please do so now. Ayan. Maraming maraming salamat po. 
Ayan. Hello to all our 247 viewers combined in YouTube and Facebook. Thank you for watching live with us. Right now, we are jumping into a brand new series entitled OG Tales, Stories of Truth and Abundance. Ayan. Exciting series ahead. We are going to talk about many parables. And today, we are going to talk about the parable of the sower. However, Bago tayo mag-dive ng mas malalim into the parable of the sower, let me share to you first two common presumptions about parables. Ito yung mga common na, na, na iniisip ng mga tao when they talk about parables. The first presumption is this. Some people think that Jesus used parables to make things clearer. Para mas maliwanag, para mas madaling maintindihan natin. Well, in one sense, it's true since great speakers are great storytellers. E si Jesus, he's a great speaker. He's a great storyteller. And however, this is only partially true for Jesus. Why? Because Jesus deliberately used parables not to clarify, but to confuse a specific group of people like the Pharisees. You might be thinking, huh? Bakit niya gagawin yun? Bakit niya gustong i-confuse yung mga Pharisees and le religious leaders during his time? Alam niyo kung bakit? Jesus told parables to confuse those group of people because kapag palagi siyang direct to the point, tapos yung preaching niya laging, laging rekta, baka maaaring ma-expose ni Jesus ang kabulukan at corruption sa religious system ng mga Hudyo nung panahon niya. At pagka ginawa niya yun, siguradong makakabangga niya agad yung mga Pharisees at yung mga religious leaders, which is actually what's happening in, in the past talks that we have talked about. So, in one sense, Jesus used parables so, so that he can buy time to delay his crucifixion. Kasi para pag sinita siya ng mga Pharisees, so anong pinagkukukwento mo? Eh bakit? Ay, ano lang naman to eh? Um, um, parables lang to. Pag ko-confuse yung Pharisees, are they talking about us or are they talking about, about another thing? So Jesus used the parables deliberately to confuse, not to clarify. Ayan. So napakagandang paglilinaw yan. Presumption number two is this. Jesus used parables to teach moral lessons. And you see, my dear friends, for a lot of people, for them, parables are like Aesop's fable. Alam niyo yung Aesop's fable? Nung mga bata tayo, meron tayo mga storya from Aesop's fables na alam natin. And yung Aesop's fable, alam niyo, these are simple stories that teach morals, teach lessons in life on how to be good. For example, ito, ang tingin ng iba, yung mga parable sa Bible is teaching us a moral lesson. For example, the parable of the prodigal son teaches us about forgiveness. Ganda, di ba? Or the Good Samaritan, the parable of the Good Samaritan, teaches us compassion. Again, this is only partly true. Yes, it talks about forgiveness. Yes, it talks about compassion. However, this is only partly true because woven into these parables were many design patterns found in the Old Testament. At yung mga design patterns from the Old Testament, they all point out to Jesus. Ayan. And in fact, these parables were actually about Jesus and about His kingdom. Yes, oh, tama. The parables taught morality. However, they, they were able to only teach morality only because it was describing the life that we should live when we live inside the kingdom of Jesus. Naintindihan yung sinasabi ko? To, in a nutshell, para mas maintindihan natin ito. Aesop's fables teaches us to be good. The parables teaches us to follow King Jesus and in the process, we become radically good. Ulitin ko ah, Aesop's fables teaches us to be good. However, the parables teaches us to follow King Jesus and in the process, we become radically good. What's my point, my dear friends? In life, please don't skip Jesus. Kasi it's not enough na mabuting tao tayo, na hindi tayo gumagawa ng masama. Because our goal in life as Christians is to follow Jesus and to be like Him. 
and inspire others to do the same. At pagkamukha na natin si Kristo, imagine nyo yan, nakamukha natin si Kristo, tapos in-invite natin yung mga kasama natin maging kamukha ni Kristo, e eh, di, di ba, imagine nyo na lang yun. Kung lahat tayo kamukha ni Kristo, what a wonderful world would that be, di ba? Walang nangaabuso, walang nanggugulang, walang nananakit, walang nagdadamot, walang nang aaway. Lahat nagtutulungan, lahat nagbibigayan, lahat nagdadamayan at nagmamahalan. Hindi ba't ang saya nun, di ba? Kasi dito pa lang sa mundo, parang langit na. Because we are all Jesus to one another. And brothers and sisters, kung napansin niyo, this is what we are trying to do at the feast. Because here at the feast, we're not just telling you to be good. Maging mabuting tao ka, no. That's not the end of it. We're telling you to follow King Jesus and in the process, He will be the one to make you good. Ayan. That's what we're trying to do here at the feast. Now, if you have been with us for a long time, kung nag-umpisang feast bigutan, 2013, and ngayon, 2021 na, grabe, no? mag 8 years na pala tayo. No? If you have been with us for a long time, maaring you might have seen and noticed a major change in the way we prepare and give the talks. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Let me give you a brief history. Ano nyo, papakita ko itong picture nito. This is the picture of the feast in 2006 in Valle Verde, Pasig, wherein Brother Bo leads the feast there. Yung pala nga nag-iisang feast nun. And alam nyo, noong 2006, we launched the feast and Brother Bo launched it for the unchurch. Sino itong mga unchurch na ito eh? Yung, ito, yung mga church, ito yung mga taong hindi na nagsisimba or matagal lang hindi nagsisimba at napapalayo na kay Lord. And that's what we did. As the months and years went by, we multiplied the feasts to hundreds of cities around the world. At isa na nga yun, yung Feast Bikutan. Isa sa mga feast na nabuo because of this movement. And here's what we did. Dahil gusto natin ma-reach yung mga church, we preach Simple, down-to-earth, practical messages that were gift-wrapped like self-help talks. Pag tinignan mo, tinanggal mo yung Bible verses para siyang motivational speech, para siyang self-help talk. And you see, kumatok siya. Our message were bite-sized, it's pre-digested, minuya muna namin, and, 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 then, and then we present it in a practical way. Tapos before we close a talk, we always lead them, the people back to Jesus. Yun ang style ng feast noon. Yes, we quoted scripture, pero hindi tayo masyadong nagda-dive deeper into them in the past. We went straight kagad, rekta kagad sa practical application. Kasi ginawa na namin yung pagnguya, kayo kakain na lang. Now, now, this is what I call Feast Talks version 1.0. Ayan. Yan yung lumang Feast Talks noon. And because of that, alam nyo nangyari? The feast was a resounding success. Many came to Jesus for the first time. Yung mga tao matagal lang hindi nagsisimba for the first time, nagsisimba na ulit. But along the way, here's what happened. Something happened. After many years of doing this, alam nyo, dumadami na yung mga feasters natin, dumadami na yung faithful feasters, and then marami nang lumalapit sa amin, and they were hungering for something deeper. Naghahanap na ng mas malalim. And this is a beautiful thing. Because they wanted to grow roots, which is a great sign of spiritual growth. So, here's what happened. Two years ago, 2019, we made a giant shift in our Feast Talks. From Feast Talks 1.0, we shifted to Feast Talks 2.0. Ano yung kaibahan ng 1.0 sa 2.0? Ito, here's the big difference. Dati, merong, merong, merong Bible verse, tapos jump kagad sa Ano, practical application. Ngayon, instead of jumping right away to the practical application, we first dive deep into the scriptures. And then, anong ginagawa natin? We, we are actually inviting you to take our modern eyeglasses at sinusubukan talaga natin to enter the mind of the original biblical authors. And that's what we are doing. And then after we go into the context of the, the Word of God, we then put in the practical application. Now, here's what happened. Because of this, the adjustment was tough for some people. Medyo nahihirapan sila mag-adjust. In fact, meron tayong mga loyal feasters na lumalapit sa aming mga feast builder at tinatanong, Brother, bakit parang kakaiba na yung pag-preach pag nyo nowadays? 
Kasi dati, itong explanation niya, dati, super practical at ang dali maintindihan ng talks. You told us what to do in our marriage, in our jobs, in our finances. But now, it's like you are giving the talk in two steps. The first step is that you bring us into the Bible and then af only after doing so, then you give us the practical stuff. Tapos tinanong niya, bakit yung ginagawa yun? Kasi to be honest, the original way was so much easier. Bakit rekta na kagad? Wala nang paligoy-ligoy pa. Practical application kagad. And so here's our common, here's how we answer it. Ang sinasabi namin, ito palagi. Actually, mas mahirap nga talaga i-prepare yung talk ngayon. I, I know this kasi, kasi ang hirap talaga pag nag-prepare ako ng talk ngayon. However, let me give you an analogy. In Feast Talks version 1.0, we were giving away fruits. Prutas na. At gustong gusto ng mga tao ito kasi napakadali kainin, napakadali i-digest. Bakit? Kasi kaming mga preacher, mga feast builder, pinitas na namin yung prutas para sa inyo, hinain namin sa inyo, kakainin nyo na lang. However, in Feast Talks 2.0, we are now giving away to you the entire fruit tree, which is more difficult. Kasi ngayon, kasama na kayo sa buong process of reflecting on the Word of God. Kasama na kayo sa pagtatanim, kasama na kayo sa pagdidilig, kasama na kayo sa pagpitas ng prutas, at sa kanyo pa lang, kakainin. And as I've said, the feast today, at the feast today, you're not just receiving fruits, you are receiving fruit trees, yung buong puno. Mas mahirap? Oo. Pero mas maganda. Bakit? Kasi mas lalalim tayong lahat. Mas ma-appreciate natin ngayon in a different way yung salita ng Diyos. Am I making sense here? I, I, I don't know if you agree with me right now. Do you like how we do things right now? I hope so because we are diving deeper into God's Word. Amen? Let me see in the comment section, are you, are you okay with that? Are you okay with this kind of setup? We are diving deeper into the Word of God and then tsaka pa lang practical application. And because I believe that's what's, what really works. Mas, mas mamahalin natin yung salita ng Diyos. Now, I've told you earlier, God will meet you where you are. It's really true. However, here's what I believe in. Once you allow God to meet you where you are, God will always ask you to go deeper. To go deeper. Here, type it in the comment section, go deeper. Kung may katapay ka dyan, tapikin mo siya, sabi mo sa kanya, go deeper. I want you to go deeper in your relationship with God. Oo, God will meet you where you are, pero gusto ng Diyos, mas lumalim ka pa sa kanya. Because that's where you grow as a person. Now, I want to discuss now the parable of the sower. Tatry natin himayin ng konti itong parable of the sower. Let me read from Matthew 13 verses 3 to 9. Let's read it. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Now, I want you to imagine, nakikita niyo yung picture habang, habang binabasa tong story na ito. Pag titignan niyo yung picture, para bagang napaka-aksaya nitong sower na ito. Parang yung nasa picture. Pa, pa, for me, ha, parang napaka-gastador. What a wasteful sower. Perhaps you're wondering why a farmer will waste 75% of his seed, scattering it all around. And kasi tayo, di ba, ang na-imagine natin pagtatanim ngayon, yung di ba, Pag, yung parang meron kang isang helero na ganyan, tanim ka, tanim, tanim, tanim. Very deliberate, ipe-prepare mo yung lupa para sure maganda ang tubo ng halaman. Hindi ka mag-aaksaya ng seeds. However, nung unang panahon, a farmer scatter seed by throwing them into the air. Isasaboy lang nila sa hangin. And they are letting the wind carry it far and wide para kumalat. Or here's another option that they do when they are scattering seeds. Another ancient method was this. Tinatali nila yung sako ng, 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 ng buto, ng seeds. Itatali nila sa likod ng donkey. 
And then, the farmer cuts a hole on the sack. So, bubutasan nila, and tapos dadali nila yung hayop dun sa farm. Tapos yung bahala na kung saan magda- magpunta yung donkey. Tapos, as he walks around, the seeds continue to leak out, falling into the soil. And that's how these seeds are actually scattered. So yes, as the parable describes it, some seeds fall on the hard path, sa kalye, sa daan. It may fe- fall on rocky ground or thorny bush. So you could say, aksaya, maaksaya, it's so wasteful. But, can you say but? Isn't God's love wasteful too? Hindi but maaksaya din ang Diyos. Ganun magmahal ang Diyos eh. Bigay todo. Walang tinitira sa sarili. Talagang buhos biyaya. Buhos pagmamahal. Yung pagmamahal ni Lord, mas malupit pa sa pagmamahalan ng tambalang Joshua at Julia do sa napanood ninyong video ni, ni Moira de la Torre. Mas malupit pa doon, di ba? Di ba alam, sino, na, sino nakapanood doon? Nang, nung, sinong tinamaan doon sa video ng lumabas ng Valentine's Day, ng video ng paubaya. Ay, nako. Sino dyan? Patatingin nga sa comment section. Meron bang tinamaan dyan? Type amen, type ako. Ayan, di ba? So, alam nyo, ang, ang sakit eh, nung kanta, di ba? Pagka, grabe, talagang parang grabe yung pagmamahal. Anong sabi doon, di ba? Sa kanta, ako ang kailangan, pero di ang mahal. Pero ang ginawa niya, sa, sa dulo, nagpaubaya pa rin. Shout out dyan sa mga taong nagpaubaya. Meron bang mga nagpaubaya dyan? Pakitas naman ang kamay dyan. At itong tanong ko sa inyo, sino dito sa inyo ang naiyak habang pinapanood yung video na yun? Diba? Meron bang mga naiyak dito? Ay, grabe yung iba tinamaan, di ba? Ayan, tinatag na nila ako sino yung mga tinatamaan. Sino naiyak dito? Alam nyo, ako kasi, ako hindi ako naiyak eh. Sa totoo lang, bakit? Hindi ako makirelate eh. Kasi ako yung pinili. Sorry. <laughs> Biro lang, shout out sa mga hindi pinili dyan at nagpaubaya. Pero alam nyo, sa mga hindi pinili at nagpaubaya, Huwag ka na umiyak, ha? Totoo, ipaubaya mo na kay Lord yun. Bakit? Kasi may nagmamahal naman sa'yo ng tunay at wagas. Sino? Si Lord. Ganun si Lord eh. He gives His love lavishly to everyone, whether we accept it or not. Minsan nga feeling ko si Lord mukhang T-A-N-G-A. Bakit? Kasi mahal siya ng mahal sa'yo, tapos dinedead mo mo lang. And here's the sad part. Sadly, kahit na sobrang pagmamahal ng Diyos, most people don't accept His love. Pero ito ang maganda sa Diyos. Kahit hindi mo piliin si Lord, si Lord patuloy ka pa rin mamahalin. He gives away His seeds of love again and again and again. Umaasa na baka this time, this time, tatanggapin mo na yung pagmamahal niya. Meron akong kaibigan, he got to know the Lord, he got closer to the Lord when he was in his 40s. At alam mo, sinasabi niya sa akin, brother, alam mo, sayang, naingit ako sa'yo. Kasi ikaw, pal, ikaw, 15 years old ka pa lang, nakilala mo na si Lord. Kung babalik, pabalikan ko ang buhay ko, babalik ako doon, sana inayos ko na yung buhay ko. Sana binigay ko na kay Lord yung buhay ko. Teenager pa lang ako. I have missed a lot of time. And you see, my dear friends, If you are watching this right now and you haven't given your life to Jesus yet, now is the time. Don't delay. Sayang naman yung pagmamahal niya. Pero ito, gayon pa man, kung nanonood ka ngayon, tapos biglang skip mo tong video na to. Eh, dead mind ko na lang, ayoko niyo na yan. Tandaan mo ito, si Lord hindi ka tatantanan. Darating at darating ang panahon sa buhay mo, babalik at babalik ang kanya, patuloy kanyang mamahalin, umaasa na baka this time or that time, piliin mo na siya. Mahalin mo na siya, pabalik. Amen? God's love is wasteful. Now, let me move on with our story. Later on, Jesus had to explain to His disciples the parable. Bakit? Kasi hindi maintindihan ng mga disciples yung parable. And take note, hindi common na ginagawa to ni Jesus because out of the 36 parables in the Bible, this happened only twice. And this is one of the time wherein inexplain ni Jesus kung ano ibig sabihin ng parable. And this was Jesus' interpretation. Siya na mismo nagsabi. Let's read from Matthew 13, 18 to 23. Sabi niya ito, Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown 
along the path. Ayan. Ito yung mga nasa kalye lang along the path. And here's what happens. Kapag nasa path lang yan, hindi talaga tutubo yan. Nasa kalye, di ba? So what happens is that the crow, yung mga ibon, tutukain yan. And they will take it away. And why? How, how does this happen? Because their hearts are not ready. Hindi nila alam ang gagawin sa salita at pagmamahal ng Diyos. Kaya napakadaling kalimutan, makalimutan or kunin ng kalaban. That's why here at the feast, brothers and sisters, we encourage you, everyone, to pray constantly and read the Word of God. Bakit? Para mas sensitive tayo sa sinasabi ni Lord. Para mas maintindihan natin kung anong gusto sabihin sa atin, Lord. Kasi minsan, sa buhay natin, akala natin walang pakialam si Lord. Lord, wala ka namang pakialam sa akin. Tama ba? Pero ang totoo noon, Lord, Lord, kinakausap mo ba ako? Ano bang mensahe mo? Hindi kita marinig. Wala ka naman sinasabi sa akin. Tahimik ka lang dyan. Natutulog ka ba dyan? Akala natin minsan hindi nakikinig ng Diyos. Pero ito ang totoo. Ang Diyos nakikinig lagi yan. In fact, ang Diyos, madaldal ang Diyos. Nagsasalita ang Diyos. Yun ang totoo. Ang lakas-lakas nga niya magsalita eh. Ang problema ito, nagsasalita siya, pero hindi natin maintindihan kasi hindi bukas ang puso natin sa Kanya. Ayan. That's the seed that fell along the, 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 the path. That's why I invite you to open your hearts so that you can understand the word of God. Kasi nagsasalita siya. We just need to hear Him. Amen? Now let's continue. The second one. The second soil kung saan bumagsak yung mga, mga seeds. The second one is this. Sabi dito, The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. Ang saya niya. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or per persecution comes, because of the word, they quickly, because of the world, mali yan, kulang ng letter L, they quickly fall away. Ayan. This is the rocky ground. Ayan. Ano tong rocky ground? Ito yung mga ta tipong kristyano na, 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 na rinig nila yung salita ng Diyos and I call them good weather Christians. Ito yung mga taong, oops, they come to the feast, sisimba sila, tapos pagka naka, nakarinig ng sermon, nakarinig ng, nakarinig ng talk, they are touched by His word, and then they even shed a tear. Maluluwa pa ng kote, Brabe, brother, touch, touch ako sa worship pa lang, damang-dama ko na yung, yung, yung salita ng Diyos, damang-dama ko na niyayakap niya ako. Yung iba nagsuserve pa. Pero itong problema, kapag tinamaan na ng pagsubok sa buhay, give up na agad. Hindi na nag ng feast, hindi na nanonood online feast at home, hindi na nagsaserve, give up na kagad. Sa akin, sana huwag tayong ganun. Sayang. Bakit? Kasi nandun na eh. And here's what happened. Bakit nagkaganun? Bakit, bakit ang bilis gumiba pag may pagsubok? Andun na eh. Nareceive na yung salita ng Diyos. Nareceive na yung pagmamahal ng Diyos. Anong problema? Hindi lumalim. Sayang. And... Yung mga ganito klaseng tao, thank you Lord, praise the Lord lang kapag maganda ang nangyayari. Pero kapag hirap na, tampo na ako kay Lord. Ganon. But what they don't know is this, is that it is in trying times wherein our faith is tested and we are invited to hang on to His word more. And when we hang on to His word more, dun ka lalago. Kasi kapag napagtagumpayan mo na yung pagsubok, dahil kumapit ka kay Lord, you will come out stronger and better as a person. Amen? That is the rocky ground. And if you are this type of person, feeling mo gusto mo nang gumive up sa service mo, gusto mo nang gumive up sa pag-aatend, pagsisimba, pag-aatend ng feast, ay, kapit ka lang, kapatid, kahit may pagsubo ka sa buhay, you will come out stronger. Amen? Declare it today, I'll come out stronger. Amen? Ayan. That's the second soil. The third soil is this, sabi dito, The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and make it unfruitful. Ayan. Ito yung mga, mga seed na nalaglag sa thorny bushes. Ayan. Ano tong mga taong ito? Yung mga taong ito, nasanggap nila yung salita ng Diyos, they love God, they serve God even for some of them. Ang problema ito, naging busy. Ang tanong ko sa iyo ito, busy ka ba sa buhay mo? 
may oras ka pa ba para kay Lord? May oras ka pa ba para sa sarili mo, para sa pamilya mo? Naalala ko ito. There is one parenting expert who said this. I will never forget this. Sabi niya ito. If you want to be bad at parenting, you don't have to be a bad parent. You just need to be a busy one. Ang ganda, no? Ulitin ko. If you want to be bad at parenting, you don't have to be a bad parent. You just need to be busy. Nung isang araw, meron akong kausap na mag-asawa, bagong kaibigan ko, couple friend, who are about to retire. And then, yung, yung daughter nila, only daughter nila, she's in college right now, at sabi nila sa akin, ay, ako, mag-early retirement ako. Sabi niya, kasi, um, kasi gusto kong ma-spend yung time ko with my daughter. Kasi working mama ko, tapos working husband din yung mister ko. So, yung entire childhood niya, talagang lunod kami sa trabaho. So, gusto ko sana, bago siya mag-asawa, before she moves out, eh, I get to spend more time with her. Kaya mag-early retirement ako. Total, nakaipon na naman ako. Eh. And so, sabi niya, I'd like to make up lost I like to make up for the lost time because of the work that I have done. Yun ang sabi ng babae. Tapos sabi niya sa akin, pero ikaw, sabi niya, tip lang. Bata pa yung mga anak mo, 4 years old, tsaka meron ka pang infant, sabi niya, spend more time with your children. Because reality is, minsan lang sila bata, at hindi mo na may ibabalik yung pagkakataon na yan. You, can, like you're, you cannot really make up for lost time. Yun ang sinasabi niya sa akin. And, alam niyo, yung sa conversation na yun, nangusap sa akin ng Diyos. Nasabi ko, ko nga, no, busy, busy ko, kailangan ko siguro to spend more time with myself, with my family, to manage my time more wisely. Because at the end of the day, yun nga, kapag busy ka, the, the devil, the evil one, might just snatch, the world must, just might snatch the word of God from your heart. And then it will be your downfall. And it's the same thing with our walk with Christ, brothers and sisters. In order to be bad at following Christ, you don't need to be bad. You don't need to do bad things. You don't need to do big sins. Sin big. You just need to be a busy one, a busy Christian, drowned in the worries of everyday world. Ayan, masyado ka bang nag-aalala sa kakukuha ng pera? Paano kakikita ng pera? Yeah, to the point na nakalimutan mo na si Lord. Sana, huwag kang malunod sa worries ng mundo. Amen? Let's continue. That's the third part. The third, fourth soil is this, and this is what we aim for. Sabi dito, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was, sho- what was sown. Ito na po, mga kapatid, yung good soil na tinatawag natin. Friend, do you want an abundant harvest? Do you want a 30-fold, 60-fold, or a 100-fold increase? Here's my suggestion. You must be a good soil. Ang tanong ito, how to become a good soil? Let me answer that question to you. Uh, let me answer that question to you. Naalala niyo yung mga nakaraang talk natin? Balik tayo dito sa parable ito. This parable is a graphic picture of the many responses to Jesus. Ha? Some negative, some neutral, some positive. And in the story, there's one sower, four soils. One Jesus, but many responses to Him. And here's what happened. The Pharisees wanted to kill Jesus. John the Baptist and the family of Jesus seemed like they were doubting. So yun yung kanilang response. Iba-iba nga ng response eh. Pero surprise, ito ah, sino ang naniwala? Sino ang maganda? Positive yung response kay Jesus. Alam niyo kung sino? Tanong niyo sa akin, sino? Ayan. It was the outcasts, the lame, the lepers, the poor, the sinners. They were the ones who believed in Jesus. Sila yon. They were the good soil na tinanggap yung salita ng Diyos, tinanggap yung pagmamahal ng Diyos. And in the Bible, the Bible calls them the Anawim. Anawim means the poor of the Lord. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng Anawim. The poor of the Lord. Ano tong mga Anawim na ito? Yan, yung mga lame, sinners, lepers, etc. They were the outcasts of the society. They had no power, no prestige, no position, 
no pride, no money, no everything. Wala, as in nothing. However, the only thing that they have, sobrang hirap nila, the only thing that they have, wala nga sila lahat, di ba? But the only thing that they have is Jesus. Si Jesus lang ang meron sila. Yun lang ang meron sila. And this is a beautiful thing because they had nothing, they made Jesus their everything. Because they had nothing, they made Jesus their everything. Kapatid, walang wala ka ba ngayon? Feeling mo kawawa ka? Tandaan mo ito, you still have Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have everything. Please make Jesus your everything. Amen? Ang tanong sa inyo ito, will you be good soil? Will you be like the Anuin? How can you become a good soil? Simple lang. You need to be empty, you need to be humble, and you need to be open. Tatlong bagay. Be empty, be humble, be open. Are you desperate for God? Are you open enough, humble enough? Are you empty enough for God to come into your life? Yes, God will meet you where you are. But the question is this, what is your response to the Lord? Kasi yung response mo kay Lord, it's very crucial. Are you going to receive joy, receive the word of God? Are you going to receive Jesus with gladness? Or are you going to reject Him? And you see, my dear friends, your response is crucial. Because if you heed the word of God in your life, your life will bear fruit. And you will produce a bountiful harvest. 30, 60, 100 times of what was sown. Yun ang sabi sa salita ng Diyos kanina. Now, the parable ends with Matthew 13 verse 9. Jesus says here, Whoever has ears, let them hear. Ayan, sabi nyo nga, hear. Alam nyo, Jesus is not just talking about hearing and listening here. He was actually talking about the Shema. Ano to yung Shema? For the Jews, itong Shema, this is the most important prayer for the Jews. In fact, they recite it at least three times a day. Parang yan yung kanilang Apostles' Creed, yung kanilang panatang makabayan. Yan talaga yung tinat- everyday pinipray nila yan para madrill in sa kanila yung mentality na ano, na, na kailangan nila si Lord. That, yun, yun, yun yung important prayer ng Jews, yung Shema. Now, the Shema starts with this li- these lines. Sabi dito sa Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Nakita ninyo, there's emphasis in hearing. And because for the Jews, Shema does not only mean hearing. In fact, the Greek translation of Shema, the Hebrew translation rather, of Shema means to hear and obey. Magkaiba kasi yung narinig mo lang. At magkaiba yun dun sa nakinig ka, tapos sumunod ka. Ayan. Parang ganito. Ang tanong ko sa inyo ito, are you hearing and obeying? Sa mga may anak dyan, o kaya kung anak ka, nautusan ka na ba ng nanay mo? Diba? Alam nyo, merong apat na klaseng responses. Kapag nauutusan ka ng nanay mo, tinawag ka ng nanay mo, anak! Maghugas ka na ng mga plato, tsaka pinggan. Alam mo, okay lang sana yan. Ang problema kung nagpaparty yung nanay mo, lalo na kapag noche buena, o kaya ano, diba? Yung ikaw to, katagahugas ng pinggan, kawawa ka talaga. For example, ito, nautusan ka ng nanay mo, anak, maghugas ka ng plato. Sana, itong unang response na pwede, sana ganito, okay mami, tapos pupunta ka na, hugas mo na. You joyfully heed the, 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 the utos, the command of your, of your mother, and then you joyfully do the task. Ayan. Ang problema, ito meron pangalawang klaseng response. Pag sinabi, anak, maghugas ka na ng plato. Ikaw, bibingi-bingihan. Tutulog-tulugan. Ma, tulog ako. Ma, tulog ako. Nakasagot ka, di ba? Bingi-bingihan. Tulog-tulugan. Bisi-bisihan kunwari, di ba? O kaya ito. Pangatlo. Tinutusan ka. Anak, magugas ka ng plato. Ang sagot mo, Sige ma, mamaya na lang. Nanonood pa kasi ako eh. Nang k-drama o whatever. Kung pinapanood mo. Sige ma, mamaya na lang. Pero tandaan mo ito. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. Madalas ko sinasabi to dito sa feast. Yung ganon, so, narinig mo siya, pero hindi mo sinunod. 
Pero ito yung pang-apat. At ito yung pinaka-favorite ko sa lahat. Kasi alam ko, totoong-totoo ito sa mga anak na maladalas mautusan ng nanay niya. Ganito kasi ako nung bata ako, yun, pag nautusan ako, di ba? Tiyabihan ka ng nanay mong anak, magugas ka ng plato. Ikaw, habang ikaw ay nanonood, nandun ka. Nanonood ka ng Netflix and chill ka. O kaya nagmo-mobile legends ka. Nandyan. Whatever you are doing, ikaw, nandun ka, di ba? Relax na relax ka. Oy, anak, magugas ka ng plato. Ikaw. <laughs> Sige na nga, ugas na ako ng pinggan, di ba? Para kang na-possess, di ba? Parang ayaw mo lumalabon yung katawan mo, ayaw mo, ayaw mo umalis dun sa pagkakaupo mo kaya sa kama mo. Ang sarap eh. Narinig mo, kahit labag sa kalooban mo, pero sinunod mo. The first one and the fourth one, that's heeding the word of God. Tandaan nyo ito, the evidence of your hearing and your listening to God is your obeying. The evidence of your hearing is your obeying. Kapatid, are you listening to the word of God? More importantly, narinig mo nga, pero sinusunod mo ba ang sabi sa ng Diyos? Amen? God will meet you where you are. Yes, God will meet you in your weakness, in your problems, at ito maganda. God will even meet you in your own sinfulness. Ganon tayo kamahal ng Diyos eh. Pero ito, yes, God will meet you where you are, but God does not just want to meet you where you are. He just, ayun yung, doon ka lang i-meet. Here's what God wants you to do. God wants to meet you where you are, so He can bring you where He thinks you should be. Parang ganito ha, example. Sino dito ang niloko na ng pinakamamahal nila? Siguro you're a single lady right now watching at niloko ka ng lalaking pinakamamahal mo. Guess what? Let me tell you this. God will meet you in that heartbreak. Ito ang problema. God will meet you in that heartbreak. Andun siya, kasama mo, mourning with you. And guess what? Here's what happens. Alam naman natin ito. Ganito nangyayari. Nakipag-break sa'yo. Tapos, ikaw, hindi ka makamove on. Iyak ka ng iyak. Nood ka ng nood ng video ni Joshua at ni Julia ng paubaya. Diba? Iyak ka ng iyak. Niloko ka. Diba? Papaubaya ako na lang. Tapos ito, two weeks after, nag-text sa'yo yung ex mo. Anong sabi sa'yo? Musta na you? Alam mo, may girlfriend na ako, pero mahal pa rin kita. Ayan, patay tayo dyan! Diba? Ikaw naman, napok maru, marupok, anong sasabi mo? Reply ka, sige, okay lang kahit number two. Ang mahalaga, nagmamahalan tayo. Nako po! Nako, yan ang malaking P-A-N-G-A. Nako po! Diba? Talagang pagka meron kay Bira ganyan, gusto kong iuntog sa pader. Ganon, diba? Parang ano ko ba? Gumising ka sa katotohanan. Pero guess what? In that stupidity, in that foolishness, still, God will meet you there. God will meet you there. He will still be with you. Kahit na nagpapakataka ka dun sa lalaking nyo, God will still be with you to hug you, to wipe away your tears. Yes, God will comfort you, but, 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 God will also challenge you. And what I'm about to tell you is not only applicable in heartbreaks. This is also applicable sa ibang pinagdadaanan mo ngayon. May problema ka sa pera, applicable ito. May problema ka sa trabaho, applicable ito. May problema ka sa pamilya, applicable ito. Yes, listen to me. Yes, God is your comforter. God will meet you where you are. He will listen to you. He will wipe away your tears. He will embrace you. Yes, He will meet you where you are. But He will also be there telling you, he will be there telling you, is this really the kind of life that you really want? Is this the kind of life that you want? Always sulking in pain and tears. Maybe it's time for a change. Listen to me. Jesus is telling you, listen to me. I have a better flat plan for you. Just allow me to lead you. Kapatid, Yes, God is in your heartbreak. But God is also there challenging you to let go of that person. Yes, God is in your financial problem. 
But God is also challenging you to find ways to augment your income. Yes, God is in your anxiety, but God is silently challenging and encouraging you to make Him your only source of peace. My dear friends, hear God and obey Him. Yes, God will meet you where you are, but let God lead you to where He thinks you should be. Hear and obey Him. He knows what's best.